The convertibles are Lou Gonzalez, Glenn Kirsten, Kendall Parrish, Tom Weidenhofer, and Ron Welch. This is the story of how a pipe fitter, a librarian, a mechanical engineer, a teacher, and a fire chief formed a quartet that lasted for more than 22 years. Long, long ago, before the turn of the century, the 21st century, that is, a group of men had formed the South Cook chapter of the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America. About 25 men met each Tuesday at the Viking Lodge in Tinley Park, Illinois, to sing four-part harmony in the barbershop style. It was their custom to meet afterward at a local restaurant to sing and socialize. When a waitress heard music coming from the tables in back, she called home and spoke to her husband. Lou, you should come over here and listen to these guys, she said. I'm already in my PJs and ready for bed, he grumbled. Lou, I want you to get dressed and come over here, she said. So he did, and a month later Lou became a full-fledged member of the chorus. The South Cook chapter included several men interested in forming a quartet for fame, glory, and maybe even some spare change. Lou had sung professionally as a young man, and his high school group, the Apollos, had specialized in songs of the 50s. So when he met up with fellow chorus members Kendall and Ron, the impulse to form a doo-wop quartet was a natural one. To fill out the quartet, Kendall, Lou, and Ron auditioned two other members of the chorus before finally settling on Glenn as the baritone. Lou would sing the melody, Kendall the tenor part, and Ron would sing bass. Naming the new group was the next step. Barbershop quartets must have a unique name to be registered with a society, so they settled on the Grand Prix. To their amazement, another quartet had already registered that name. So, in keeping with the automotive theme, the group called themselves the Convertibles. And that name was approved. Because of Lou's experiences, the group decided to learn a couple of 50s songs. Doo-wop music was almost unheard of in the barbershop society, so Kendall began to compose arrangements especially for the convertibles. Before long, songs like Blue Moon, Good Night Sweetheart, and Duke of Earl were edging out traditional barbershop tunes like Sweet Adeline in the quartet's repertoire. The Convertibles' first public performance took place in 1998 on stage at a South Cook chapter show in Park Forest's Freedom Hall. Their costumes included blue jeans, penny loafers, and t-shirts, with fake packs of cigarettes rolled up in their sleeves. The audience response was so enthusiastic that it gave the Convertibles the confidence to continue. Soon afterward, the quartet had learned enough 50s music to perform at a coffee shop in the Park Forest Plaza. There were only eight or ten customers in the shop, but the owner took up a collection after the 20-minute performance. Individually, they only earned enough money to buy a bag of popcorn, but it was their first paying gig. They were over the moon. Gradually, the quartet began to branch out. The delivery of singing valentines for the South Cook Chorus was one of their most enjoyable activities. Along with a box of chocolates, a rose, and a photograph of the occasion, the convertibles would sing two songs, typically Heart of My Heart, followed by In the Still of the Night. Promise I'll 
Some of their more memorable singing valentines included an elementary school teacher in front of her giggling students, a desk sergeant at the police station, and a bodybuilder at the gym surrounded by other weightlifters. The reactions were almost always positive with smiles and tears of joy, but occasionally the result was acute embarrassment. The bodybuilder, for example, refused to let them sing a second song and sent the quartet to serenade his wife instead. Public libraries in northeastern Illinois keep a list of performers who had proved to be a good draw for local audiences. Once the convertibles were added to that list, known as the Best of the Best directory, their bookings began to increase dramatically. Libraries throughout the region hired them for an hour-long show of music and humor. A few long-winded jokes gave their voices a rest between songs. Audiences groaned after punchlines like, You gotta keep the worms warm, and Pardon me, Roy, is that the cat that chewed your new shoes? But despite the groans, many libraries called them back for repeat performances, year after year. The Cancer Support Center in Homewood, Illinois, sponsored several musical shows in the early 2000s. For two years in a row, the quartet donated their services to help with fundraising. During the second annual show, Glenn accidentally knocked over the painted scenery flat, hiding the cast from the audience. Needless to say, the quartet was not invited to participate the following year. Because the convertibles offered a non-traditional version of barbershop music, their presence at Illinois District contests caused other barbershoppers to take notice. They were invited to perform at other chapter shows, including those for Sweet Adelines. One chapter even enticed them to visit by offering a free round of golf before the singing began. The quartet was also hired to sing at several grand openings for businesses. They sang to the customers, the cashiers, and even occasionally to celebrities. For example, they sang with Dukes of Hazard actor John Schneider at an Ace Hardware store. And Mr. Clean admonished them to keep it clean at another one. A string of Walmart grand openings proved to be lengthy affairs that strained their vocal cords, 
but the chance to entertain was irresistible. In 2005, the convertibles accompanied the South Cook Chorus to Washington, D.C. in honor of Peace Officers Memorial Day and Police Week. The singer sat in folding chairs on an elevated stand in front of the nation's capital, just 100 feet from President George W. Bush. Minutes before the ceremony began, a flock of Canada geese flew directly overhead and decorated their rented tuxedos with green goo. It was unforgettable. By 2007, Kendall's voice had suffered from years of air pollution working at a lime company. The convertibles honored his nine years of service, including his music arranging ability, sense of humor, and laid-back announcing style. But after his retirement, they were left with a gaping hole in the tenor position. Tom stepped up to fill that position. Each of the convertibles brought something to the table besides their voices. Like Kendall before him, Tom was an ideas man. He streamlined their programs, created logical storylines of music and patter, and suggested dance moves to accompany the songs. Ron booked the quartet performances, arranged for custom embroidered shirts and jackets, and kept track of props. Lou brought his knowledge of obscure 50s hits like Crazy Little Mama and later on took over the time-consuming chore of bookings. And Glenn assisted with technical support and occasionally wrote song parodies. The quartet had other advantages too. None of the members smoked or drank, for example and a shared sense of humor helped to maintain their friendships over the years. And best of all, they had the strong support of their spouses. Carol, Donna, Leslie, Nancy, and Sue became patient and understanding cheerleaders who helped the quartet with planning and costuming and sometimes acted as a sounding board for new routines. The quartet showed appreciation for their spouses with special dinners, live shows like Forever Plaid and the Million Dollar Quartet, and even a Caribbean cruise. As time passed, the convertibles' reputations grew and so did their ever-expanding repertoire. A website and a Facebook page were created, bringing in brand new customers. And in addition to their regular show package, the convertibles created a special Christmas show. Jingle Bell Rock! 
As a result, their annual bookings increased to the point that some had to be turned down. Eventually, three months at the beginning of each year were blocked out so that Lou, Ron, Tom, and Glenn could plan vacations uninterrupted by gigs. And yet, the quartet was still performing 25 to 30 shows per year, averaging two gigs every three weeks. Car shows and village fairs were a natural fit for the doo group, and the convertibles were often called upon to act as strolling troubadours. One of their most photogenic pictures was taken alongside a beautiful red convertible at one of these events. On several occasions, a professional event planner hired the quartet to perform for large groups of seniors brought in by bus to the White Fence Farm restaurant in Romeoville. The audiences were very enthusiastic, but Lou, Tom, Ron, and Glenn were even more pleased with the free chicken dinner and hush puppies provided between shows. A few bookings were for very large audiences in banquet halls. With tables stretching out into the distance, the quartet's unaided voices could not be heard by everyone. On these occasions, the quartet asked fellow barbershopper Dave Martin for his help with microphones, amplifiers, and speakers. Dave was unfailingly cheerful and efficient, and he always had his equipment set up before the quartet arrived. There were hundreds of performances over the years, and inevitably, a few stand out. Some good, some, well, not so good. The quartet was welcomed by most church audiences, for example, but one time, the members of a Seventh-day Adventist congregation sat with stern, unsmiling faces throughout the entire performance. Apparently, the lighthearted tone of the show was not appreciated. Another time, the convertibles arrived at a banquet event for several hundred people. Due to miscommunication, they were not forewarned about the need for microphones and loudspeakers. Halfway through the third song, the banquet organizer angrily shouted them off the stage. The convertibles once performed for dozens of local dentists in downtown Chicago, but a pre-planned series of jokes about tooth decay fell completely flat. Another failed performance took place when a cosmetologist hired the quartet to sing at a small business expo in Chicago Heights, but no one showed up to hear them. And one afternoon, a gig at a millennial's cocktail party was so noisy that the quartet members could not even hear themselves, let alone the young adult audience who simply spoke louder to overcome the noise from the quartet. Fortunately, the vast majority were happy occasions rather than disappointing ones. For instance, the convertibles will always fondly remember providing background music at the wedding of two professional circus clowns in Tinley Park. The quartet also sang at a wedding reception held at the Adler Planetarium, where Blue Moon seemed very appropriate, and the bride certainly had stars in her eyes. On one occasion, a young man wanted to impress his fiancée, so he invited the convertibles to Brookfield Zoo. As Lou stepped to the side, the young man took his place in the quartet and sang the melody to a couple of barbershop standards. The young lady was properly impressed, but there is some doubt about the zoo animals. Another time, as the quartet prepared to sing for their second performance at a large evangelical church, several members of the audience rushed onto the stage wearing black leather jackets, jeans, and dark glasses, 
and serenaded the convertibles themselves with In the Still of the Night. One of their most memorable activities occurred when they were asked to attend the inaugural performance of the Jersey Boys show in downtown Chicago and to perform for theater goers after the show. The reception was held at the Art Institute, so the quartet sang to couples as they passed the stone lions and entered the museum, and then again later as they left the reception. It was a near-perfect evening when drama, music, and the visual arts all blended together. Over the years, the convertibles have sung for birthday parties, anniversaries, high school reunions, and Memorial Day celebrations. They have sung for the Red Hat Society, as well as the Daughters of the American Revolution. They have sung at campgrounds, assisted living facilities, family reunions, funerals, and retirement dinners. They held more than 400 performances in three different states. And for all these events, and after all these years, the convertibles agree, it was a pleasure entertaining you. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really can't stay. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.